In this video I'm going to show you a website that is absolutely OP when it comes to OSINT research and gathering valuable information. I will show you some practical approaches and techniques on how to use this website ethically. And as always, this video is for educational purposes only. Do not use the knowledge of this video to commit any crimes or to violate the law. Stay legal. Thank you. The website I introduced just now is called grab.app. Grab.app is a powerful online tool that leverages the capabilities of regular expressions and grab-like functionalities, but on a much larger and more accessible scale. You already know the Linux tool grab, do you? Grab is a command line utility in Linux and Unix-like operating systems used for searching plain text datasets for lines that match a regular expression. Grab's primary function is to search through files, outputting lines that match a specified pattern. This makes it an invaluable tool for a wide range of tasks, from simple searches to complex pattern matching. It's commonly used for searching through code, log files, configurations and any textual data to find specific patterns, diagnose issues or simply understand the structure or presence of certain data. And that's exactly what grab.app does, but on a much larger scale. It scans through billions of lines of code across over half a million repositories hosted on GitHub, providing developers, researchers and curious minds with the ability to search for specific pieces of code, patterns or even comments across a vast array of open source projects. GitHub is a web-based platform that serves as a repository hosting service, providing version control and collaboration features primarily for code. It utilizes Git, a distributed version control system designed by Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, to allow multiple developers to work together on projects from anywhere in the world. As you can see, grab.app as a web-based application stands out for its user-friendly interface and the depth of its search capabilities. You simply have to type a search term like password and you almost instantly get over 1.8 million search results for repositories on GitHub where the word password hides somewhere in the code. This alone is not dangerous yet, but if you search for the pattern password equals double quote, which starts a string, you get password suggestions that you should never use for your accounts in the future because they are well known. If a developer forgets to remove passwords or other critical information like API keys, which we will search for later in this video, an attacker might get the chance to get his fingers on real passwords used for real accounts, which results in real threats. Another problem is that the attacker can directly follow the link to the repository on GitHub and now has both the potential vulnerability and its source. Normally this would be a great educational resource. By providing real-world examples of code usage, it helps learners grasp programming concepts outside the confines of textbook examples. It's a treasure trove of real-world applications illustrating not just how to write code, but how to write effective, efficient and clean code that has been adopted and used in live projects. But if we see the world through the eyes of an attacker, this tool offers a great source of potential security flaws. Let's talk about API keys now. An API key is a unique identifier used primarily to authenticate a calling program to an API. It acts as both a unique identifier and a secret token for authentication and it helps in tracking and controlling how the API is being used, often for purposes such as limiting access to a service or tracking how many requests a user has made to an API. API keys are often stored in variables like API underscore keys inside a program. If we want to search, for example, for OpenAI API keys, we can start the key string with the two lowercase letters SK. Why? Well, OpenAI keys typically look something like a long random string like this. 
This key is provided to users when they create an account or an application within OpenAI's platform and is required to be included in the header of API requests for authentication purposes. As you can see, the API key has been commendably censored here, but if we have a look in some of the other repositories, we can see API keys that still might be active. And that's a problem. You are not allowed to use API keys found on grab.app or GitHub. You should rather inform the developer that he might have leaked an API key. The comments above the API keys suggest that they are not valid anymore, but you never know. Users can refine their searches on grab.app with precise regular expressions, making it possible to find exact matches or explore related code snippets that could be spread across different projects and languages. This is invaluable for developers looking to understand how certain functions are used in various contexts, debug their code by comparing with others, or even find inspiration for solving complex programming challenges. But it can also be used to specify the search for API keys because you already know the structure of an OpenAI API key. If we tick the box regular expression, we can search for the structure of an OpenAI API key. Since we know that only uppercase letters, lowercase letters and numbers are used, we write this character set inside brackets and with a plus sign at the end, we say that these characters occur at least one time. With a double quote, we close the string and now crap.app searches for OpenAI API keys. For the open source community, grab.app acts as a bridge connecting projects and people. Developers can see who else is working on similar problems, potentially fostering collaboration or at least offering insights into different approaches to common coding issues. It's a way to stand on the shoulders of the coding giants of the open source world, learning from their successes and their mistakes. Privacy and security are considerations for any tool that searches through publicly available code and grab.app navigates these waiters by focusing solely on open source repositories. This ensures that all the code it indexes is intended for public viewing, sharing and use. However, it also serves as a reminder of the importance of being mindful about what is shared in public repositories, as sensitive or proprietary information can be exposed if not properly managed. Preventing and mitigating the leak of API keys and passwords, especially on platforms like grab.app that index code repositories, requires a multifaceted approach. Instead of hardcoding credentials in your source code, use environment variables. The use of secret management tools keeps sensitive data out of your code base entirely. Utilize secrets management tools and services designed to securely store and manage sensitive information, such as HashiCorp Vault, AWS Secrets Manager, or Azure Key Vault. Implement a thorough code review process that includes checking for accidentally committed sensitive information before merging any changes. Use pre-commit hooks in Git to scan for sensitive information automatically and prevent it from being committed. Furthermore, educate team members about the risks of exposing sensitive information and best practices for handling credentials securely. Did you know about the existence of grab.app? and will you use it in the future? Feel free to write your answer to this question in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.